Hi, I'm Joey Henderson with iConnect. Today I want to show you our TU-502 gas-fired control board. Now this actually simulates three types of gas valves, and we have the pilot assemblies here so that the students can actually hook up a propane bottle, and provided with the unit is the tank holder as well as the regulator. You can put a propane tank. This here is a MAP tank and you can actually hook up the tank to each one of these pilots. Light the pilot, and you can actually demonstrate to the student how to hold down that button for 30 seconds to make sure it stays lit. On the back side of this trainer is a fan that's actually pressurizing this cabinet. This is the outlet of each of the gas valves. So when the pilot is proved, and the student turns this to the gas valve in the on position, sets a call for heat at the thermostat. It will actually open up this gas valve and they can feel the air pressure coming out to know that it's actually operating. We have a 24 volt thermostat. We have a line voltage thermostat. We have a fan limit control. This actually has a heater behind it so that it will activate and turn on the system, simulate turning it on. If you leave it running, it'll actually overheat and show that it trips out on high limit. Here we have our transformer. We have our fan relay, our air conditioning relay. And down over here, we have all of our indicator lights to show them when they energize. This simulates also a magnetic gas valve as well as a millivolt gas valve. So here you've actually got a live working trainer with live pilot planes for them to be able to troubleshoot through here. You could even change these out with failed thermocouples, let them troubleshoot that way, check voltage on these as they go through. This is a 115 volt training unit and it transfers to 24 volt through the transformer. As a instructor myself using the TU-502, some of the ideas I had about training First of all, the students will use banana jacks here to complete each of the circuits. So first they're gonna to have to identify which circuit is for heating, which circuit is for cooling. We've even got a diagram here. I would actually have them tell me which one is safe for cooling and then have them identify it and trace it out to show that it's gonna bring on. So if I said cooling, they could actually follow it here, the trace of the electricity going to our cooling indicator here. Then they could actually jumper R to Y and make the circuit come on. We also have that built-in fan in the back. That's gonna be our continuous fan running so that we can have the pressure for the gas valves as well. So here, they actually would go into the cooling side of the thermostat, set it for cooling, troubleshoot it from there, or wire it in. That's another thing too, is that you could have them um, use banana jumpers to actually wire it up for heating or cooling, then turn it on, and see if it worked for them. Another way you could also use this is a troubleshoot to reset here, our fan limit switch for different temperatures. And that way if it overheats, they can actually see the bimetallic moving in there and tripping out on high temperatures. Here we have our relays. Of course, we've got all kinds of tricks to show them relay problems there. Uh, one of the things I used to do is take off the connector here, put a little tape on there, slide it back on. You can also create fake connectors that would simulate a failed contactor or relay or also a loose connection. Of course, as I always said, the only limitation is your imagination.